Scientists may have just rewritten human reproduction and the ethical issues around this are going to be massive. So here it is. Scientists have taken human skin cells and created human eggs. Well, CBN's Trey Goins Phillips joins us now. Trey, tell us more about this. Yeah, I mean, this story is crazy and also should be deeply concerning, obviously, to anybody who holds a biblical understanding of human life and the value of life. And we'll get into, I'm sure, Raj, the like playing God issues of all of this and the devaluing of human life through potential designer babies. And oh my gosh, it, there's a ton of stuff here that we could get into. But just going off of this report of what we've learned so far, uh, like you said, it's scientists that are at Oregon Health and Science University. They successfully did this. But what is scariest to me is how far they got in this process and that nobody, at least it seems in the science world to this point. Now, I know there are a lot of great Christian scientists out there, but a lot of these scientists here haven't raised the ethical concerns and have enabled themselves to get this far in the process. They were successfully able to fertilize 9% of those eggs. Now, they didn't make it very far in the embryonic development process, but the fact that we're even having this conversation and this is something that we're trying to do, and by the way, the way the media is framing it, mm -hmm. uh, is concerning. Well, let me read you an article from NPR about it, just a, a couple of sentences uh, yeah. Scientists have created human eggs containing genes from adult skin cells, a step that someday, here it is, could help women who are infertile or gay couples have babies with their own genes, but would obviously raise difficult ethical, social, and legal issues. Uh, that is just, uh, wow, we're here, where you can, as you said, uh, create designer babies, where now it is theoretically possible for gay folks to have both of their genes in said baby or women who are infertile um, have, I, I don't even know <laughs> where this goes, but you talked about the ethical issues. Um, and I think it's important to start in scripture. So let me read something really fast from Psalm 139, a very famous verse, for you created my inmost being you knit me together in my mother's womb. I praise you because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Your works are wonderful. I know that full well. Um, so Trey, what do you think when it's it's not necessarily you, God, who have knit me together in my mother's womb? Quite literally, you would have been knit together by scientists. Where do you think the biblical uh, <laughs> position should be on this news? Yeah, look, I think there's a lot of things we can talk about with stories like this. I think some of it goes back to just this sexual revolution, this new sexual revolution that we are in the midst of when it comes to like the transgender issue, rather than treating somebody um, who's dealing with gender dysphoria and pointing them to the the truth of scripture, what do we do? We affirm them and say, you identify how you want to identify, and we're going to create all of these systems to support you in identifying that way, rather than lovingly guiding somebody toward the help that they need. And I I see this similarly, right? Instead of explaining, look, marriage is something that God designed. It is God's institution between one man and one woman with the intended purpose of procreating, bringing more lives into this world. But instead of guiding lovingly, again, people away from their own sinful desires, which we all have, and toward the truth of how God designed us, what we're seeing is more and more systems propping up this false definition of marriage, this perverted idea of sexuality, saying, look, you, not only can you be married in a same-sex relationship, you can also have kids, and we can create in a lab children that are based on your genetic material. That should be concerning to anybody who understands what God's definition of marriage is. So, I mean, there are just, so, again, so many different directions we can go down. One of the other concerning things is they fertilized these eggs. Now, they didn't make it very long, but if we believe in the sanctity of human life that begins at conception, these were human lives, right, that were potentially thrown away uh, or were, in fact, thrown away for nothing more than an experiment. And that should be alarming to all of us. The idea of playing God, uh, referencing back those verses that you just referenced, 
and also just going against the natural order of how God designed us to be in relationship and to be bringing life into this world. Yeah, amen to all of that. Uh, we want to know what you think about this. Um, obviously, the ethical, the moral, the spiritual ramifications of this are absolutely massive. We are, it's not even a question of it anymore. We are starting to play God. Yeah. Um, when it comes to human reproduction, when it comes to a lot of things. So, so all that to be said, we want to know your opinion. Let's keep it civil, uh, but please do comment um, in, in the comment section uh, and, and we'll, we'll read them. Uh, we want to know um, what you think and also um, what you want to uh, focus uh, more on. What, what other, uh, you know, ethical playing God things uh, do you want us to discuss, to discuss, to bring on experts uh, who can speak about this, uh, because this is just the beginning, as as you pointed out, Trey. Uh, we're you know we we went from like cloning sheep to now designer babies. I mean that's what it is. You are designing children in a lab uh, that would normally not be biologically possible, and that raises just a whole swarm of of ethical issues. So we want this to be a back and forth. We we legitimately. Want to know what you think? So please do comment uh, in the YouTube comment section. But I think Trey, to your point, um, when it comes to uh, God's design, when it comes to being able to say, you know, in certain parts of Europe now, you could be arrested for saying what you just said, Trey, which is a yeah. really sad, a sad point in human history. Uh, but you know, I think here at CBN, we're going to continue uh, to 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 not just preach biblical truth, but it's the truth, right? Um, and I think those two things are one and the same. Uh, so if you want uh, you know, us to continue to um, examine these stories, please let us know. Uh, but Trey, it's, uh, it's, uh, it's a weird world we live in. And I know a lot of people are feel, feeling, what's the word? Uh, maybe scared, uh, maybe yeah. like, oh my gosh, the world's lost its mind. Uh, in closing, Trey, how do you think people should be processing this news? Look, I think this is an important issue to talk about. As you said, we want to engage in a compassionate dialogue with people. And that's exactly what we want it to be, is a compassionate dialogue about these issues. And I especially want to be sensitive to the the mothers, the potential mothers, the longing to be mothers who are struggling with infertility, those couples that are struggling with infertility. We want to embrace like godly and biblical options for them. And there are many different avenues and, and discussions that we can have on that front. So that is not a group of people that we want to attack. We don't want to attack anybody, but we do want to be sensitive, most importantly, to what scripture says about how we should value human life and how we should pursue the continuation of human life and the development of human life. So you know, science is an incredible thing. Modern medicine is an incredible thing. And I believe a gift from the Lord. But we can't think that just because we've got these technologies, we have the moral right to play God in any of these kinds of situations, right? God is God, and we are certainly not. And I think it raises a ton of moral, ethical, uh, and, and just confusing questions when we try to step into the place of God. So anyway, yeah, I think this is something we have to continue to, to talk about, to think about, and intercede for our country and our culture on behalf of these things and bring them to the Lord and, and turn to Scripture. Look to Scripture whenever something kind of rubs you the wrong way or think, I, I don't know what this actually means, or does this actually jive with Scripture? Look to the Bible, take it to a trusted mentor and talk about it with your pastor, with your church community. Uh, these things are going to continue to develop. So it's critical that as Christians, we get ahead of it and engage in it culturally. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you for your time and God bless, Trey.